Good morning. Here we are on Palm Sunday, and Jesus' triumphant ride into Jerusalem at the time of Passover. What's interesting was there were two processions, one at the western gate and one at the eastern gate. Pilate came in in the western gate, demonstrating imperial power. He had to be in Jerusalem for the major Jewish festivals. Now visualize, if you will, close your eyes and see this. Cavalry on horses, foot soldiers and soldiers on horses, leather, armor, helmets, weapons, banners, gold eagles on poles, marching feet, cracking leather, the beating of drums and the stomping of feet. And there Pilate, in the middle, surrounded by his imperial power and domination. Now, if you will, go to the Eastern Gate, where Jesus is coming on a donkey, surrounded by a much smaller crowd of peasants. I believe Jesus planned it this way, as a counter procession. It is a symbolic procession or demonstration promising peace and justice. I was thinking that, you know, we experience many demonstrations daily in our society. We march against poverty at Queen's Park. We march for the homeless at City Hall. We march to protest pipelines in Ottawa, just to mention a few. These are also symbolic demonstrations, meaning we don't intend to shut down Queen's Park, City Hall, or Ottawa, even if sometimes we think that might help. Well, this is what was behind Jesus' demonstration riding into Jer Jerusalem that day. His demonstration actually had two parts. Once he got to the city, he went directly to the synagogue uh, and to the great temple and to the court of Gentiles. And what he did there, everybody remembers. He overturned tables. He overturned the tables of the animal sellers, the money changers, and the priests blessing animals. His intent was not to shut down what was happening there, but to point out their methods. Let me explain just for a minute. Let's use for an example, someone comes in to buy his sacrifice, and he has enough money to buy a little lamb, a pure lamb. And so he goes over to the table, and he buys his lamb. And immediately he's told, well, now you have to take it over to that table where the priests are because it needs to be blessed. So he goes over to the table, they take his lamb, and he gets a little upset, but they say, no, no, don't worry, here's a voucher, and you go over to that table over there, and they will give you the money, the lamb. So he goes over to the table, gives his voucher, he gets his money, and then they say to him, well, now you have to go over <clears throat> to the other table. Well, actually, he goes back to the table to get his lamb, and they tell him no, you have to go over to that table because uh, you have to have that money exchanged to be the temple currency. So he goes over to the other table, he gets his temple currency, he comes back to buy his lamb, and they say, oh, uh, that's not enough money to buy a lamb, but we have here, that will buy you a pigeon. And uh, that just doesn't seem fair to Jesus. Now, he was not there to shut everything down. He was a, Jesus was, he was a devout Jew. He saw and supported the temple. The selling of animals for sacrifice was a way to collect temple taxes. He understood all this. He was not against the priestly mediators. What he was against was a domination system which was legitimized in the name of God. He wanted to demonstrate with loyalty to God, uh, the God of, in, of Jude, Judaism meant. He wasn't against the priestly class that collaborated with Rome. It seems to me that when he demonstrated today, uh, we, when we demonstrate today rather, sorry, we um, tend to polarize ourselves into opposite sides. We, are, we believe that we are right in what we want, 
and we will not compromise. Now, I don't know whether you ever watch CBC News, and if you watch CBC News on Thursday night, there is a little feature uh, called At Issue. It's chaired by Rosie Barton, and the panelists are, you, are always Chantel Hebert, Andrew Coyne, and Althea. They were discussing all the demonstrations around, this was before COVID-19, the they were discussing all the things going on around the um, pipelines and all the demonstrations. And there were people, there were natives that wanted the pipeline, there were people, natives that didn't want it, there were of course the oil companies that wanted it, and then there were the environmentalists that were demonstrating against it, all wanting what they wanted. And so Andrew made this comment, Andrew Coyne said, you know, if we're going to solve this thing, we have to understand that everybody isn't going to get what they want. Um, so mediators are probably required and compromises will have to be made. Now this recent COVID-19 pandemic has polarized us as a society. We have been forced into isolation and we realize that we really don't like it. That it's not, it's not natural to us. We, we uh, want and indeed need to be together. We're learning a lot about ourselves during this pandemic, and we are beginning to op uh, op appreciate others and the people they do and the things they do, like never before. For instance, when was the last time we showed appreciation for nurses and healthcare workers, paramedics, firefighters, police? Gosh. Even politicians are working together. <laughs> when we break through this pandemic, my hope is that we will begin to trust each other very differently and treat each other differently. We'll, we will do things for the love of our neighbors. Now we go back to Jesus. His message that day during Palm Sunday, when he marched into Jerusalem, the day of Passover, he called it the kingdom of God, and it continues to this day. So our, our goal today, or our challenge today, is we have to ask ourselves, what procession are we in? What one do we want to be in? That's our challenge as we move from Palm Sunday into Holy Week. God bless and stay safe. And oh, call somebody today and tell them how much you appreciate them. Amen.